Hey people, Richard here. Welcome back to the Elite League show. We're back in the quarterfinals. This is Ashes of Typhon and say hello to Twyla Lee with a Lord Commissar. Strong offense and support fights in the melee combat begins with a refractor shield. Up against is Forest Radio rocking a Tech Marine. Starts our French combat, puts out some good damage, can also support the structures and repair and even get into melee. Some Blood Ravens here. Tactical Marines expect another scout squad I would say on this map. Always very useful to have one that can do some stuff on this west side. Twilight perhaps with some Catachins to do the same thing. With a Sentinel on the way. Commissar doing his capping stuff. He's going west. Try and mop up this side after he caps it. Does pretty well early on as a brawler. Can certainly tangle with some tactical marines and of course tie up the tech marine. He's going to have fun shooting guardsmen early on. Here's that Sentinel. So vital in those first engagements. Although the Commissar can take some slack off it, I think. Getting in there and smacking things up. Instead of this guy taking all of the shots and all of the focus. Double Sentinels then. And no second scout for Forrest. Commissar is going to go for the VP before he pushes on. And Forrest not taking that uh, Western Rip point over here. Looks like those guys are going over to do so. Ground Pound upgrade is in for the first Sentinel, taking a bunch of damage though. Very early on for the Tech Marine and the Tactical Marines, those guys loading in their Kraken Bolts to do extra damage to the Heavy Infantry Armor of the Sentinel. 20% more too, it really does seem to make a big difference for those guys. And here's the second Sentinel. Gonna need some Devastators, in fact here they come. Maybe some more Tactical Marines after that to try and shoot these things down. Lord Commissar's found the enemy VP and goes for the decap. Scouts can go and tickle him with their bolters, maybe. This is the one with the ground pound trying to get close. Oh, stops one. Just got one model there. Now he's standing around. Devastator's now in play. Polali backs off that sentinel. This one is decapping and does get the decap. Some strong starts on this east side. Lord Commissar chases off the scouts shield is up now taking shots forest pinned back very early on devastators are really going to help him edge forward though here they come doesn't want to go too far but they might try to dive in with a stomp second sentinel does not have it oh boy heavy bolter model gets shot to pieces by so many las guns two models dropping there it's really slowed down the start without the second scout squad, I think. And a tech marine being shot up. And those tactical marines are forced off. Really rough start for the space marines here. Where's that Lord Commissar? Oh, he was retreated. Now they can shoot power. And this guy's decapping stuff, is he? Oh, he's going to find the scouts. What was this plus 10 red I just saw? Did they drop a model? No. Must have been... From ages ago, only now just popped up. We have a multi laser turret facing a curious direction, we shall, we shall say, from Twilight Elite. Not sure what happened there. Very odd. He may be drinking. He may be drinking. Oh, they might get this Sentinel here, these Marines, and the Tech Marine, they do get it. Nicely done by Forest Pounce there. Yeah, he salvaged the, the turret. I'm not sure what happened. Misclick, I suppose. 478, 365 on the VPs. Mine's going down from the Tech Marine. He's got his Artificer armor. Gives him a good chunk of health and health regen and those mines. And since Tyler Lee doesn't have a detect unit, they're going to be nasty on that west side. Some knockback, some damage and suppression. Devastators, again, quite easily dealt with. Really needs another... another few bodies on the field here, Forrest, I think. Takes the VP back. Got some power over here now. Not very often you see that power built up. Do you have the power sword, Mr. Commissar? You do not. We do have a heavy weapon squad on the way. I was expecting Catachins, but we don't see them. There's the inspiring courage from the Lord Commissar executing a model to buff the damage of the squad by... 100% you get double damage from that thing 
but it does prevent the squad, I believe, from retreating for a certain amount of time, so it can be very dangerous for you as well. Here's the uh, heavy bolter, heavy weapon squad. Those guys just carrying some more ammo across their necks. Why not? Who needs ammo boxes? Devastators again, just being outshot by the Sentinel combined with some guardsmen. Tech Marine gets a model before retreating. Lord Commissar inspecting these enemy generators, leaves them alone. Apparently they are all up, up to standard. Okay, guardsmen are having a go on now. Force of an 8 to 306. Tier 2 for Forest. Had that power over on the east side quite a long time, I think. Scouts doing their thing. Tier 2 now for Twilight Elite. And they get all of this power down. There's not much in the way of defense. In fact, these guys are locking down this whole area. Nothing can really deal with that right now. They could try and squeeze through here, but uh, you cannot see the firing up of your enemies. In fact, they can just get close enough, it turns out. These guys did not have enough vision range to start shooting there. And are forced off. Power bashing continues. Las Gun's not the most efficient thing for shooting down buildings. It's a lot of lasers. At least they can hit it reliably. Here come some devastators now. Try to suppress these guys. Might take a few bursts at this range, or only two. They can just move out of it though. Where's the tech marine going? Oh, he's just putting some more mines down. Oh man, look at that. That's like every model hit there, I think. Tactical Marines should be able to outshoot these guys into one with just a sergeant in play. You see them tearing through them, especially after the mine hit. Speaking of mine hits, there's one. Suppress and knock down and get some good damage in from that default bolter. Really does pack a punch. Around 30 DPS piercing, I believe. Lord Kamasa goes down. Thanks to the mine. Some pro mine play. Toy Ali doesn't seem in too much of a hurry to get Catachins up once that Chimera and Forest has a Razorback. Both of them transport vehicles, but they do have some differences, of course. Chimera allows you to shoot out of it if you get inside, which is pretty fancy. There's a stomp. Is he going to try and chase down this Sentinel here? Sentinel, without its missile launcher, can't do anything against the Razorback. Norkin, the Heavy Bolter, really, it continues. Nothing obviously coming out in terms of anti-vehicle. No LAS cannon or auto cannon here. Oh, we do have missile launcher on the way for the Sentinel. Razorback doing some good work. Allows Forrest to get on the contested VP here. And look at this, has both the natural scouts doing their work. Oh, it was tactical marines. Scouts are mid with a sergeant. They can now throw a fragmentation grenade. Plasma guns are in, though. Bad news for heavily armoured tactical marines. Bad news for all infantry, really. Some decent damage in on the tech marine, too. He's got level two, could not get the VP locked down, though. There's that Chimera. Allows these guys to reinforce, and since they have their sergeant, and reinforce two at a time. Lots of them dying there. But that's what they're there for. Gonna try and get the cap while last cannon fire comes in. Chimera gets out of its range. And they do get the VP. Lord Commissar getting the west side. Looks like he might try and patrol that area. Go south. Hit the enemy VP. Tactical Marines have their sergeant. These guys being sneaky. Nothing here can spot them. They could get a grenade out. Maybe. Or perhaps save it for these fellas. I believe at some point Sentinels had a small amount of uh, detector range. That was a really good grenade. It's keen sight is what they call it. Took out four of those heavy weapon squad fellas. Almost whacked them out. Beautiful grenade. But here comes the plasma gun brigade. Not going to end well for Forest. this fight. We might see the end of the Razorback too. Because this Sentinel's chasing with crack missiles in. Plasma Cannon Devastators 
caught out of position. Eaten a stomp. Sentinel does back away. Cautious. They don't want to try and chase the Razorback into base. And then all of those things turn and shoot at it. 415206. Lord Kumasar killed something, I think. And is now going to try and get this VP locked down. Power bashing. That one's completely decapped. Tough place for Forest. Very hard to approach. Double Plasma Gun Guardsmen supported by Chimera. And some suppression supporting them too. Scouts can't do it all with their grenade. Can try and pile everything into the Razorback. Get your tactical greens into melee range. But uh, this thing will be shooting it all the while. And now these fellas have Commissars. Makes them reinforce three at a time and the commissar himself is a pretty good combat unit you can also execute them of course to stop retreats and stuff tactical marines on capping duty tech marine goes up the west side try and shift the battlefield over to cause a split and here it is the guardsmen pile into the chimera two to one cap though continues to tick down against forest radio where's that plasma cannon this could do some work for sure those guys get another very good grenade only gets two kills that time oh but down goes the sentinel last cannon gets the last shot tactical means disgorge from the drop pod and immediately get their sergeant going we might see some stone guard veterans that was a good very good passage of play sentinel taken down more tactical marines on the field now They're not going to trade super efficiently, efficiently with the Guardsmen still, especially fully upgraded now, these guys. Ogryn's on the way now for Twilight. Bad news for pretty much everything on the field, I guess. These guys are out of luck with their last cannon. They could try and go for these generators. I don't see them switching sides for this thing. Tech Marines almost level 3. We do have some Stone Guard veterans. First company tactical Marines that can change their ammo to combat all targets at the moment. The Scala means they have Hellfire rounds loaded in. Which have like acid in them or something. Give you damage over time versus light infantry and heroes. God Commons are still level 1. It's hard to kill Marines. Here are the Ogrins getting their bonehead leader. There he is. Heavy melee squad can go in and try and tear up, literally, this Razorback. Might want to get the Mastercrafted Bolter once he sees him for that on-demand suppression. Maybe some shotguns too. In fact, these fellas already have shotguns. Love how the Commissar runs around with his sword in the air. Perhaps I can get some very good hit. Holy crap. There's a grenade. That means they can't shotgun blast. Another very good hit from the plasma cannon though. That's kind of now getting shots in Razor back there to support while Ogrins are charging through. And they have been super buffed right now by the Lord Commissar's bionic eye. Replaces your Inspire Courage with Inspire Determination. Which supercharges a squad as you can see. 3.5 speed. It's crazy. Almost doubling their speed, I think. Double damage, of course. And as you can see, just tearing through stuff. A mutant suppression as well. Pretty effective there. Took out the last cannon in seconds. Did not go after the Razorback, though. Those plasma cannon shots uh, maybe saved this side a little bit. Because if they didn't get those two big shots in, Ogrins would have had tons of health. Could have just kept going. These guys... Ending their retreat to reinforce off this Chimera again. Lord Commissar now moving in. Getting stubbornness. And why not? Has 24 Guardsmen around him. And 4 Ogrins potentially. To buff from. Now trying to cap. That is a smoke show actually from the Razorback. To try and support those Marines over there. Meanwhile west side. Shotgun scouts doing some work. Getting the heavy weapons squad out of there. And trying to get a decap. 358. 97 Forest is not out of this yet. Stone Guard now going to cap. These guys getting their sergeant again. 
some mines dropped in for when the Ogrins or the Commissar try to run into the back lines, I suppose. Could try and bait them into some mines. And I think it's like 45 energy to use a mine or something. Doesn't tell me here. He also has a plasma gun, which is good for damaging the Ogrins. Doesn't really have a way to control them, though, apart from the mines. I guess plasma cannon shots are pretty good for that if you can hit them. Look at the map, though. He's got some map here, Mr. Forest Radio. After a shaky start, edged his way back into the game. Tactical Marines being solid as usual. These guys with the missile launcher help them maybe take out this Chimera now that the last cannon's gone. Going heavy west side now is Tolali. Double cap for Forest, but not for long. There's the two to one. It's going to be at least a one to one. These guys providing some vision, not much they can do against all of this. How's Forest going to respond here? Really good switch by Twilight Elite. Just as Forest was getting settled on the east side, now he has to move and try and set up somewhere else. Some interesting driving from the Razorback, and now it's in play. Parks right in front of the Ogrins. Everything gets the hell back inside and backs away from these giant human things. Two to one. Tier three now for Twilight Elite. And has a bunch of red too. Well, this is the play. Goes to the VP. Smoke shell comes up. I guess this is the play to make. Pulls them away from this VP, ready for the scouts. Nicely done by Forrest. Ogrins are gonna try and flank around, are they? Nope. They are indecisive, let's say. Off they go. Try and block the escape path for the Razorback. Those tactical marines are going to go down, and they do. Plasma guns are painful, it turns out. These guys also taking a lot of damage, but they are reinforcing like crazy off the Chimera. 277 to 77, double cap now for Forrest. Overcharge. Tech marine getting flung all over the place by the Ogrins, using their use your raid ability given to them by the Bonad leader. Escape, flee. They are going to get away, I think. 272, 77. Razor back with that reinforced armor plating. Should be okay. Oh, Ogrins. No, needed to keep driving, I think. There's the uh, inspired determination. They almost caught up with their mines, knocking them over at least, not suppressing them because of the. Inspired Determination buff. But that might have saved the Razorback. The great synergy, of course, with the Chimera and the Bionic Eye is that when you execute one of them to get that crazy buff, you can instantly reinforce it if the Chimera is there. 262 to 62. Dreadnoughts on the field for Forest. We're trying to use this guy to fight those Ogrins, but with that buff, it might be might be dicey. Also have an auto cannon in play. There's the Basilisk Flare. Good grenade going in. Decap. Stone Guard gets in low. Ripper Guns coming in, doing some work for the Ogrins as they charge. Here is the Dreadnought, though, getting in behind the Imperial Guard army. Now he's going to smack up the Lord Commissar. I think Ogrins are still relatively healthy. One to one cap. Lehman Ross on the way now for Pod Ali, and that could be the end. Unless this Dreadnought could do some serious work. Ogren's going in. There's the Emperor's Fist. And there is the Inspired Determination. Used it a little bit early. Lost some of the time as those guys were on their asses. Global Repair from the Tech Marine. Blessing of the Omnissiah. And they are getting chewed up by the Dreadnought here. Finishes them off. Does finish them off. Dreadnought. How did the Dreadnought le not level from that? Now it's level. There we go. So a victory there from Forrest. Could be a small victory. Because the Lehman Russ is about to hit the field. But uh, now we know. Buffed Ogrins cannot take out a Dreadnought. It did have some repair support. But I think it would have won without it. And of course the Inspired Determination was not used at the perfect time. Those guys 
still stunned and on the floor for a few seconds, but I don't think it would have changed things, but it might have. Here's that Lehman Russ. 1200 hit point tank. And here's the Vanquisher. Anti vehicle upgrade. Oh, more anti vehicle, I suppose. Turret going up here. Bad news for these guardsmen. If he can get built inside. There we go. Very quick suppression. And some good damage outputs, as you can see. Chewing through those things. Uh, people. Men. 2 to 1 cap for Forest. Not giving up here. Lehman Russ can't get through. Now it should be able to. Razorback's been pretty awesome. Level 4. We've had some very good vehicle control from both players. Actually, down that thing goes. And uh, Dreadnought taking all sorts of shots. Buffed up weapon squad now. Back away here. Try and waste that buff. Ouch. Ouch. And that's at the maximum range of the autocannon. Autocannons do increase damage as you get close to them. I'm pretty sure. Still that 2 to 1. Another turret goes up. Is it going to be the missile turret? Basilisk Flare. Apparently Twilight once said he doesn't go tier 3. There is the missile turret. A assault cannon dreadnought coming in. There's that barrage. And look at the damage from that missile turret. For some reason, try to shoot infantry there. And again, what is it doing? It's losing its target. And now trying to shoot at the Lord Commissar. The turret was doing a great job when it was shooting the tank. Dreadnought gets another kill. This guy's been awesome. Level 3. 184. 34. 2 to 1 though, still for Forest. Polali can't quite put the nail in the coffin here. Has so much red. We said the Dreadnought might go down. DC grenade, but still, everything reinforcing off the Chimera three at a time. How many guards would have died for this? There's a bunch more dead guardsmen. But they continue to reinforce. Look at them. Where are they coming from? Dreadnought survives. Level 4 now, this guy. Did I say that? We might just get chased back here. 159 to 34. One more will do it, I think, from that Vanquisher Cannon. Boom. Could also go and chase the Razorback. No real reason not to. Vengeance rounds from the Stern Guard wouldn't be enough to threaten this thing alone, I don't think. Here's a cap for the 2 to 1. Forest Radio in some trouble. Did really well after that shaky start. Look at a dead guardsman here. How many plasma guns? Lost. GG. Is he going to concede or play it out? Level 7 Tech Marine, look at this guy, has the refractor field in play. Level 3 Stern Guard. Chimera only got level 2. I guess it's hard to kill Marines. Why don't the Commissar, only level 3, does have the Fist of Brockus. Looks like the VPs are going to be allowed to count down level 3 Guardsmen, level 3 Guardsmen. They were pretty awesome. Another Dreadnought is on the way. It's not going to hit the field in time. VP is going to count down. And Toyla Lee is going to take the first game of this best of five quarterfinal. There it is. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Hey people, Winfred here, back with game two 
of this quarterfinal. This is Leviathan Hive. And Forest Radio has brought the sneakiest orc you can find. It's the Commander Knob. Infiltrating hero that shoots you, stabs you, and blows you up. Orcus Tower begins range combat with a twin link shooter. Kodali continues the Imperial Guard trend with an Inquisitor offensive hero with powerful control abilities. Bit of support too. Begins in melee combat but can get ranged weapons. We have double shooters and double guardsmen into a sentinel. Nothing out of the ordinary then. But uh, who can hold this south side with the two natural VPs on it? You might see the sluggers run down there first. Maybe everything. Commando's pretty good at uh, operating alone, even though he's not a brawler per se. The stun bombs give him a lot of leeway in that regard, and he does a big chunk of damage with that twin link shooter too. Gets his stun bomb off, gets like two or three free bursts with that twin linked shooter and pretty much everything has to retreat I think in tier 1 maybe not marines another sentinel on the way from Toilali we saw this in the last game which he won one sentinel was taken out though 494 to 500 very early on 1 to 1 cap commando is going to get the contested here's some Daka Inquisitor took so much damage running in there double shooters in your face now they should be able to uh, get some... Oh, here comes the other Sentinel though. I was just going to say, with the Inquisitor off the field, they should be able to make some headway. But now double Sentinels really complicates that. This guy getting his ground pounded. And a full retreat there from Forrest. They didn't want to deal with that second Sentinel at all. Here's that Commando doing his thing. Is he going to shoot? There we go. Killing some Guardsmen, as you do. Oh, there's the sergeant, though. And the stomp. He allows the uh, sentinel get in the stomp. Guess he just wanted to get as many shots as possible and then retreat. Rather than trying to dodge and do that kind of thing. Looters up. With their awesome looking death gun. And a bucket of bullets on the side. Do they actually go into the gun? Nobody knows. The orcs think it's firing, so it is. Get in for the stomp, though. Oh, we have both of them this time with ground bound. Don't think we saw that last time. No upgrades yet for the Orcs. Early power being spent on those looters. We'd like to see some stick bombs. These guys have bombs thrown at them. They might not want to stick around and repair Sentinels very long. Decap over here. Tickled the power a bit. Upgraded shooters now. With those big shooters. These guys also getting it. A stomp on the sluggers. I mean, not a whole lot Forrest can do with these guys. With double sentinels. Trying to get them into combat. When they can both stomp. Just kind of run, ran them in there to try and maybe... Have this guy move around trying to get into stomp position and take shots while it does so. What's this? Inquisitor doing some decapping. Commando just capped something, I think. Being outmaneuvered here slightly, the Orcs. There's those looters under a back at base. Not sure what happened to them. After that stomp. Commando stops infiltrating himself. Eats a hammer of the witches to the face. But that's a lot of DACA for the Inquisitor. She was right on the corner there, though. So is able to get in. Good special attack. But uh, Orcs are big. And she has to get out of there. 408-464. Double cap. Strong start for Tolali. Commando is... Oh, turning back to cap. Sentinel moves in for the stomp. Even if it doesn't get the stomp, makes these guys turn their back and move. They can't shoot at you. Still that double here. Double Sentinel is being used very well by Tolali. These guys just trying to brute force it. It's not going to work, I don't think. Another stomp coming in. Where's those looters? Here they come. I think they were left in base a little bit too long there. Unless there was another fight that I completely missed and they went back to base again. Sluggers. Oh, hide the boys. 
Maybe try and get in on the Guardsman, which means the Sentinel needs to stop the uh, Sluggers and therefore not the Shooters. They get in. Just going to retreat here, I think. There we go. Got some kills. There's another Stomp. What is the cooldown on that thing? Tier 2 now for Toilet. Looters can edge forward. They can grab this VP. Try and lock down this weird little raised area. Hard to approach when it's covered by a setup team. Because it gets a shot after her Hammer of the Witches. These guys are trying to burn generators. It's not going to work out for you. Sentinels do need repairs though. It can be tough keeping double Sentinels repaired through Tier 1 with double Guardsmen. Shooters now fully upgraded with their knob leader and big shooters. They will be dishing out some serious piercing DPS. Especially early tier 2. When they get that 15% I believe damage bonus from having a knob leader. I really catch you by surprise. Speaking of tier 2. Tol Ali is almost there. Here's some Daka. I assume their accuracy gets screwed up while they're moving, but I'm not sure. Isn't their accuracy always screwed up? They're orcs. There's a cap keeping these guys together, which I guess is smart. What's this? Looters set up and infiltrated. 3-3-2. 4-6-1. 1-1 cap. Going to be a 2-1 for Forest. Maybe. Double Sentinels rolling in. Gets a stomp on both squads there. A little bit sloppy by Forrest. Could have moved one of them at least. If he was trying to get the cap. Most likely split both. And try to shoot down the Inquisitor maybe. As it stands though. It's going to lose that VP again. 3-3-2 three, three, to 4-6-1. Going to be a 2-1 for Red now. Power bashing. Sentinel harassing. And now decapping. Here's that Chimera. Exact same build then from the last game so far for Twilight of course a different hero in play in terms of units the same thing I believe Sentinel got the decap and a full power bash not looking too great for Forest. goes tier 2 just had no real answer for these Sentinels couldn't get the looters in play at the same time as the shooters all doing their thing Sluggers Kind of unable to do a whole lot. Maybe they should have been up here to the north. Decapping all this stuff and trying to get in around. And burning stuff down while other things were, f were fighting. Much easier said than done though. Here's the Chimera. A massive light on it that never turns on. Two of them in fact. Double cap here. More back up. Commando has got his orky shotgun on the way. The special shooter. Which is bad news for the Guardsmen. Turns them into very small pieces of Guardsmen. Have they got... They do have Commissars. That power completely decapped. Now try and get, trying to get the Contested back. But uh, the map is not looking great for the Orcs right now. Just couldn't really get it going here. Forest. Seem to always be outnumbered in the engagements. The Sentinels, of course, making a massive difference in every single fight. Every stomp hits, I think. Every stomp hits very well. We have a beamy death gun looter squad getting shots on the Chimera. These guys need to tie them up. And they do so. There we go. The damage that thing does is crazy. As a stomp, though. 227 to 461. Holy crap. The shotgun did some work there. That was worth it. Did it wipe a squad? It didn't wipe a squad. It seemed to kill like... Look at them. Like six or something guardsmen. Stick bomb was on the way now for Forest. Double Chimera for Toilele. Okay then. The most annoying build in history. Double Chimera, double Sentinel. Most annoying Imperial Guard build. Oh boy, sluggers, poor sluggers, they do get away. And this is going to be tough, shall we say, with just a single beamy 
These guys can stun vehicles, although I think it's only 1.5 seconds uh, per grenade that hits, I think. I mean, I assume that stacks. There's the stun bombs, but they completely miss. And the Hell Fury dropped on their heads. 198 to 461. Uh oh, these guys coming to base now. Both loaded up with Guardsmen as well. Just tearing through stuff. Down goes the Beamy. This is GG right here. And he did get the stun. It only, yeah, it only seems to be like two seconds or so. Seems like more of them hit than one. Maybe it doesn't stack. I remember when the uh, when they first added stun bombs, stunning vehicles. It was outrage. Everyone saying it would be insanely overpowered, but uh, I guess it wasn't in the end. One five six to four six one double triple cap double cap, and uh, there's the game. And a level two commando got that one awesome shotgun blast off. Could have done a little more, a little bit earlier, I think, with some stick bombs, maybe. So hard, though. So hard to deal with those double sentinels. Every time we tried to get in position with looters and shooters, we saw that stump come in. Perfectly timed, perfectly executed every time. The Inquisitor got was only level one still, with the Inquisitorial Mandate. They have it, guys. It's now 2-0 in the quarterfinals here. It's so a best of five. And we'll go into the next game. I'll see you there. Hey people, Injured here, back with Game 3 of this Elite League quarter-final. We are on Caldera Safinery, and Forest Radio has brought out the Force Commander. Very good offense fights in melee combat. Chronos of Tank, Disrupt and Support with buffs. Blood Ravens and Tolali apparently just brought all of the Imperial Guard for his five hero choices. I wonder who the others were. Did we see any of the others? I'm not sure. It's a Lord General. Starts off range combat with this retinue of Stormtroopers to help him out. To get more retinue members throughout the game, giving him more abilities and stuff. Really strong defense and support. Mustache, cigar, one handed bolter. Just overpowered in every way. Tactical Marines out. Same start here for Toil. We'll see if that second Sentinel pops up. Force Corner coming west. Lord General going east. No second scout. I thought that was a mistake on the first Ashes game. But uh, here's a hint. Injury doesn't know what he's talking about. It is the second Sentinel for Tullily. Of course, going to back away from those Sentinel shots. Not a whole lot he can do. Maybe we'll see the Chainsword and Storm Shield. That thing's awesome. Scout's under attack. And they back away from this scary Lord General. Stomp is up. There it is. Again, a little bit sloppy from Forrest. We haven't seen him really trying to dodge those stomps. I mean, and maybe he just couldn't dodge the stomp there. The Sentinel at full acceleration. Even if those tactical marines turned, as soon as they saw it, he might have still been able to catch them. And he just wants to get as many shots in as he can. Scouts and tactical marines forcing close combat on these guards and they're not having fun over here. Power armored elbows hurt. Like crush your chest. Force one is out of there. Another stomp comes in. And those guys now have to retreat. We have double tactical marines maybe into devastators because he has really struggled dealing with the double sentinel so far. In the first game he took one of them down. With a last cannon shot, I think, in tier 2. Was it a last cannon shot? No. That was a second Sentinel going down with a last cannon shot, I think. First Sentinel was chased, but he had the Tech Marine then. 
459 to 500. Two to one very early for Podali. Another stomp. Conveniently plays to harass this power if he can get these guys off the field, but looks like not. Those guys turning around. Where are the guards I'm doing? Reinforcing, cowering. Look at the map right now. So very red. Sacrificing some of that early game presence without that second scout squad to get the double tactical wins up quickly. Let's we'll see if it pays off. These guys are strangely split up. The force one is all alone, eats a stomp. Lord General getting into close combat there. What's he doing? Doing something he's doing well, apparently. I think he has a special attack, that guy. Guards will need to do some repairs over there. Lord General continues to chase back and now gets on the natural victory point of Forest. No snipers, no devastators. Not sure what the plan is for Forest. Maybe triple tax points. Oh, here we go. Devastators are on the way. Stormtrooper drops, but he can reinforce them in the field. Which is obviously cheating. So his moustache gives him special powers. 403 to 500 double cap here. And now power bashing. Devastators should be able to turn this around. In the immediate future anyway. They should be able to get rid of this stuff with Devastators coming in. And double taps with their Cracker Bolts. There it is. Cracker Bolts activated. Those guys are still in melee stance I think is why they ran forward. Uh oh. Lord of General has found the Devastators before they can set up and ties them up. Sentinel dealt with there. Look at that. Battle Cry buff and double crack on bolts. And here's some flame up. Roasting those guards and can he finish them off there? Very, very close. Very, very close. In fact, he did. Look at that for a fight. Devastators didn't even get involved, really. The power of the double tactical marines. These guys now healing up. Need to reinforce. After power built though. Good fight for Forrest. Paul Ali already two up in this series of course. Wins this game and he wins the quarter final. We do have the guardsman replaced. Sergeant already on the way. How much does that cost? 85. Devastates a capping duty. Force Commander comes in. He's done well. I mean, he's he's drawn fire, if nothing else. That's for sure. And once he gets in there, he's a menace. Bolt pistol doing work, as you can see. Levels up to two now. Artificer armor in play. Very popular choice for the Force Commander. Wanting to be more persistent in the field. Ouch. Those guys running right into that stomp. Trying to get close to Flamo's Guardsman, I think. 3 2 1 to 500. Force Commander continues to chase. Love to see him with that chainsaw. And uh, Storm Shield. He's already got his chainsaw. Crack and Bolts loaded in. Big deeps against that Sentinel. Force Commander. How many Guardsmen are you going to kill, buddy? Halfway through level 2, just killing Guardsmen, I think. That's a lot of guardsmen. Pushing up here now, the Devastators in play. Might even be able to get on the power. This Sentinel got pretty low. Tier 2 though for Tridali. We have full gens up for Forest. Has come back very strongly here. Played it very, very well since those Devastators hit the field. Using those tactical marines quite aggressively. Force Commander getting stuck in. Now trying to heal up. These guys with their flamer, of course, could try and get on the power. Devastators. I uh, thought they were going out wide to uh, start the push on the power, but they are setting up again. In some heavy cover. They make their pipes very sturdily in the Imperium, it turns out. They're always heavy cover. Uh oh. Are you going to drop a model tactical marines? Lord General trying to get in on the Devastators. Now those guys can turn to attack him again. And he... Uh, that was too heroic even for him. 
Chimera on the way for Twilight Elite. And there's tier 2 for Forest. It's in decent time. Not sure though if he's going to be able to get on the power hit before the Chimera hits the field and gets these guys out of it. Did the stock kill a model there? I think it might have. He does do a little bit of damage, I believe. Flame. Buffed with 40 Emperor as well. Look at this damage. Holy crap. I don't think Tolali noticed that buff there. That was very close to whacking both squads. Awesome play from Forrest. Awesome usage of that ability. These guys now trying to go for a power bash. 40 Emperor is still in play. How long does it last? It seems to last a while. They are very low on hit points, though. Very low on hit points. Down goes one model. They almost got two generators there, as you can see. Chimera is up. Here it comes. 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 6. What is all this crap on the... Uh, was that a creeping barrage at some point? There was a creeping barrage that I completely missed. Kind of... Sentinel goes down, yes. Bolt pistol shot from the Force Commander. He's almost level 3. Forest gets to tier 2. Has options for dealing with this Chimera, of course. Space Marines can transition very quickly into anti-vehicle. Here comes the last cannon. Could also get missile launchers up. Could also get a power fist up. These fellas. Oh, he's got the Commissar Retinue Bloke. Gives him that fancy shield. I think it's like 55% damage resistance. Librarian is what he's gone for to support the last cannon with the awesome Veil of Time. And Smite is a uh, bad news for Garsman too. Do we see plasma guns? Not yet. Ogrins it is for Twilight Leo. I was just going to say he's saved up a lot of resources there. What's he want to get? And it is some Ogrins. Of course, one could respond with his Thunder Hammer. Could see some plasma guns too to fight them. But his first problem is the Chimera. If we can take this thing down quickly, puts him in a pretty strong position. And then really focus on the Ogrins. Going mid right now. Librarian leading the line hit. Smite. Painful. A really good opener. You hit the Smite well. So you get the Guardsman off the field very quickly. And uh, that's some vehicle support gone. Guardsman here with a Commissar. Almost getting roasted. Here's some Veil of Time Devastators being chased down though by the Lord General. Uh oh. Got caught. Went the wrong way with them I think. They're still Veil of Time. But uh, I think they're going to be forced off the field here. They are. Can't use them against the Chimera right now. Ogrin's now coming in. Ripper Gun's getting shots on the Librarian. Who's getting stuck in. Needs to be careful though. Using his quickening, quickening on himself. Gives him speed and some damage resist. Now runs away. Could go straight through to the power. Ogrins can get on it. Get some XP for blowing things up. 277399. Looks like they're going to blow this up instead. And these guys will shoot over here. Maybe. Yes, these guys with plasma guns now. And more on the way. Gives you three in the squad. Yeah, really painful. Really painful. Force Commander got through and got the cap and now has a Power Fist. Not to mention Iron Halo. And he's going to bash power with his Power Fist. Pretty effective, I suppose. Going to get one down. At the very least. But uh, so is this pretty effective. Gonna wipe that, wipe the gens. Is a force staff. Pretty expensive thing. Is the force barrier worth 25 power? I suppose if it stops these guys killing your tactical marines, it is. 277-371. Force one levels to three. And did get two generators down. Not sure why he backed away actually. Could have smacked around this Lord General. I guess worried about flanks from these Ogrins. 
Scout's still doing her thing. I have no war gear. That's kind of still in play. No, there's Marines. There's one. And there's the other. Plasma gun and rocket launcher now. There's that force barrier. It's so slow though. Look at this. Just backs away. Didn't follow it up. Man, I like the idea of the force barrier, but is it really worth the 25 power? Never really seen it be amazing. Maybe it shouldn't be for 25 power, but uh, it just seems so slow. Counter plays pretty easy. You watch the librarian walk forward with his very obvious stuff. When he starts the very slow animation, you back off and it just doesn't reach you. Maybe if you could load him into a Razorback or something, drop him right close to some stuff, he could make it work. And yeah, I can't remember the last time I saw a really good force barrier. It does give him some more ranged and melee damage. Actually gives him 35 DPS piercing, which is pretty good from range. Force commander goes down, which I guess is where a lot of the cost comes from. The fact that it buffs him in straight up combat as well. Maybe if it made his smite slightly better or something. That'd be cool. Scouts capping still. Got buffed up Garden with fire on my target. Who else has he got in there? The medical fella. For the Ogrins, I suppose. Where are the Ogrins? They are at base. That's kind of unable, really, to put any shots in on a camera that I noticed. But I do miss a lot. Heavy cover. But those are plasma guns. Could try and maybe get one of the squads around to the flank. So that it's not affected by the cover. Smites. Boom. Level 3 force commander buffed by Veil of Time. Might be the best bet to get that Chimera down. Not sure what the cooldown is on Veil of Time. Maybe that wasn't the best time to use it. I'm seeing time a lot. Guess we're on some heavy cover. Ogwins on the prowl. Tactical Marines are ready, apparently. Where are they? There you are. As they try and approach, all of this stuff draws off some guardsmen, but they, of course, will just back away and then reinforce off the Chimera. Heavy bolt up. Ogwin's heading east. Just have a look at stuff maybe. Here's the last cannon. Gonna take some shots though. Smite goes in. Creeping barrage. Ogwin's were gonna go after the last cannon I think. But now they can go after the tactical marines. Force commander is suppressed so can't get on them quickly enough. 168 to 362. And it's a full retreat from forest. He's just, just got so many different things to deal with. And there's the game, in fact. And that's the quarterfinal. The Blob of Guardsmen, the Chimera, the Ogrins in the front lines. And of course, the Lord General doing all sorts of stuff with his retinue and his sniper rifle. Solid play from Tolali. Really good effort from Forrest, though. Congratulations on reaching the quarterfinals. Going through the league and all that stuff. But Tolali looking pretty strong in the Elite League. And we'll see him in the semi-finals. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.